Good evening. Uh, we are back to the study of the Spirit's book. We are on chapter two of book one, which is general elements of the universe. We did in the past weeks, knowledge of first principle of things, spirit and matter and properties of matter. The only item remaining is universal space, which is only a couple of questions that we're going to cover today. And then we begin chapter three. Uh, so let's go to the two questions of universal space, Philip. Yes. <clears throat> Number 35. Yes. Is universal space infinite or limited? Infinite. Assume for a moment that there are boundaries. What would be beyond them? This perplexes your reason, which tells you that it cannot be otherwise. The same is true with regard to infinity in all things. The idea of infinity cannot be grasped in your narrow world. If we imagine a limited limit to space, no matter how far away this limit may be, reason dictates that there must always be something beyond it until we arrive at the idea of infinity, because this something even if only an absolute void would still be space. So Kardec asks the spirits, uh, and remember 1857, very restricted knowledge of the universe. Uh, we already had the telescope, Galileo Galilei um, allowed us to, to reach uh, a lot of, uh, of, of knowledge of the space. But still, we were pretty much restricted to our own solar system, not, not much beyond that. We knew that the stars were not uh, stationary, like we thought in ancient times. Uh, we, we knew that uh, Earth was not the center of the universe, uh, that even our galaxy was exist, that, that, that our solar system existed in our galaxy but not much more than that. So the spirits are telling us here that the universal space is infinite. Uh, and they bring the idea that uh, if there was an end to the universe, what, what happens beyond this end, right? Even for us to imagine that there is something uh, that ends and nothing else, becomes very hard. Uh, the concept of infinite, even if we don't fully understand what's, the, what's infinite and uh, the never ending is a concept that sometimes is hard, it makes more sense to us than a concept of an end that as Kardec says here, right? Um, no matter how far away this limit may be, reason di dictates that there must be something beyond it. <laughs> Even if it's absolute void, there will still be space. So Kardec tells us also, um, according to his knowledge, that uh, you know the, the, un the universe is infinite. And uh, we are not even going to enter into different concepts that appeared later, which is mute multiple universes and things like that. But for, for now, we, you know, uh, what the spirits told us uh, 170 years ago remains still um, what science discovers, astronomers discovers more and more, which is um, that the, inf the universe is infinite, has billions of galaxies, trillions of stars so far, and we're still evolving on our uh, understanding and knowledge of it, okay? Number 36. Yes. Does an absolute void exist anywhere in the universe? No. What appears to be a void to you is occupied by matter that your senses and instruments are incapable of detecting. 
again, the spirits gave us this answer that ab absolute void does not exist, that the void that appears to be a void is occupied by matter. And science nowadays has proved through dark matter and all the studies that matter, dark matter, and anti-matter, that everything is matter uh, in the sense of either energy or matter, right? So what the spirits told us 170 years ago, science is just uh, confirming to us that uh, there is no void. Everything in the universe is occupied by matter. Air is matter. Um, everything that uh, we see is matter. Okay. Um, these are the only two questions on this uh, subject, universal space. And then we move to chapter three, where, where we are going to discuss creation, God's creation or creation of everything, okay? Philip, creation of worlds. The universe comprises an infinite number of worlds that we see and even those we do not see. In addition to all animate and inanimate beings, all the stars that revolve in space and all the energy that fills up that space. You can read then the first question. Was the universe created or has it existed for all eternity like God? The universe obviously could not have made itself. And if it has existed for eternity as God has, it could not be God's work. Reason tells us that the universe cannot be made, it cannot have made itself. And as it could not have be the work of chance, it must be the work of God. Okay, so. First, the definition of the universe, right? An infinite number of worlds that we see and we don't see, uh, animate and inanimate beings, all the stars and all the energy that fills up the space. Again, energy and matter, one transforming to the other. And then the philosophical concept of the creation of the universe or if it has existed for all eternity like God. And then the spirits give us the answer that uh, the universe cannot have made itself. Uh, and if it has existed for eternity as God has, it got, could not be God's work. So if we understand that the universe, that everything that exists is a creation of the creator of God, then we must conclude that the universe was created by God. Otherwise, uh, not everything was created by God because the universe was not created by God if it existed all the time. Now, we can go a little bit into speculating what did exist before, uh, but we are not going to get anywhere because it's beyond our capacity of understanding. As our capacity to understand God is limited, right? So the concept that God is eternal has, ex has always existed, but the universe was created at a certain point by God is what the information we have from the spirits. And as Kardec says here, reason tells us that the universe cannot have created itself. Now, there are those scientists that believe that everything is a work of chance, right? That everything happened by chance, the creation of the universe, the stars and everything. Um, again, we don't, have, uh, we don't have proof, we have logic, right? Because what does it make more sense? That everything so well organized and so well into the right place appear by chance 
or there is a creator behind it, right? It makes much more sense to, to accept that there is a creator, even if we don't want to call it God, we want to call it uh, the origin, the creator, whatever word we want to use. But um, when the more the scientists study the universe and presents the concepts of the universe, uh, a, a millimeter of a deviation of uh, the, uh, the, the orbit of Earth around the sun would cause Earth to destroy itself and to, to crash into other planets. So everything is, works in perfect order. For us to think that uh, this happens by chance, it's really, it's pushing a little bit, right? Again, um, we respect those that prefer to believe that and they will eventually, we believe that they will eventually uh, learn that there is a creator, but uh, for us here, uh, when we put a creator behind all this, it just makes sense. Reasonable, right? Okay. Questions, comments here? I have a comment. I don't know. I'm thinking I'm thinking out loud. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, and it's you know, I'm thinking out loud. Uh it seems to me that concepts like before, after, when it comes to when you contrast that to to eternity and infinity, infinite, kind of to me like it doesn't make sense. Like they don't apply to that. Once you said it's eternal, after, before, and I don't know. It's 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 just thinking out loud. You know what's all you know? What's your take on that? Not you. I'm, I'm talking about everybody. You yeah, the, even the concept of time is a concept that serves for us here on Earth, right? And then uh, our with uh, with the planet Earth and around Earth, we know that science already proved that. Uh, if you travel at the speed of light to another place and then come back, uh, Earth will have age, then you uh, have the same uh, age that you left. Uh, so it time uh, differentiates as you go across the universe. So, but again, um, our understanding and the, the, the concept of time as we know here on Earth is what serves us at this moment. We cannot go beyond that concept. We understand the, what science brings to us, the, 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 the knowledge of the difference, the travel to space and time uh, can change uh, who, who, you know, our, our own age, but it is all theoretical. Right. Exactly. Yeah, that's very good. It must be. I think that's that what you just said now. I think it must be emphasized that this is all speculation and theoretical. Yes. That we don't know it for a fact. You know, it's mere speculation and just you know proposing a, a hypothesis. But in reality, we yeah. don't know. When we talk about eternity and the inf inf infinite, yeah, that's that's. Uh, uh, we are using our concept of time. And if the concept of time is uh, serves just for us on Earth, then of course these concepts of uh, eternity and um, an infinite will have to change as we learn more and adjust uh, our knowledge <coughs> to the to the universal concept of time, which you know it for sure is something completely different, right? Even if it exists, uh, we don't know. No, we don't know. Thank you. Okay. How did God create the universe? Using a well-known expression, God's will. Nothing can give a better idea of this all-powerful will than those striking words contained in the book of Genesis. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Again, the question by Kardec is very ambitious, right? He asked the spirits, how did God create the universe? There uh, is. Yeah, the spirits probably, you know, they know better than what they can express because we don't have words 
to express. So they explain in a way that we can understand, which is God's will. And I think it's a, it's a beautiful answer from the spirits. Uh, God created the universe through its will. And that's as, as much as we can, uh, we, we can understand. Right? Yeah, it's like said, God created God created the universe, period. That's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> we cannot go beyond that, right? Because no. we would need to, to be able to understand God much better than we do to understand the concept. Uh, again, will we know? Yes. I'm you know, perfect spirits that are co-creator with God of everything, of course they know how the creation works. But until we get there, that's uh, at our level of evolution, the more, that's the most we can, we can uh, get, God's will. Uh, and again, uh, something that we discussed a couple of weeks ago, right? God acts through the spirits, according to my concept, uh, so perfect spirits are co-creators of the universe. And again, that brings also the philosophical aspect of when God created the universe, were there spirits there? Because if there were spirits, then the spirits helped create the universe. But where were these spirits before the universe existed? We're not going to get anywhere with this, so I'm going to stop here. <laughs> Okay. 39? Yes. Can we know how the worlds were created? All that we can say and that you are capable of understanding is that the worlds were created by the condensation of matter distributed throughout space. That's very interesting for 1857, right? Uh, the worlds were created by the condensation of matter distributed through space. Let's go to what science knows today. Um, just a second here. Okay, now this is our, these are for further questions. Um, so. According to the current scientific understanding, the creation of the world or the origin of the universe is explained by the Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang Theory proposes that the universe began as a hot, dense singularity around 14 billion years ago. Uh, the Big Bang, the universe began as an infinite, small and dense point known as singularity. The singularity contains all the matter and energy that would eventually form the universe. This is science nowadays. Uh, around 14 billion years ago, the singularity underwent a rapid expansion known as the Big Bang. During this expansion, space and time began to unfold and the universe started to cool and evolve. So you see that the definition that science gives to the creation of um, of the universe and of the worlds hasn't changed much from the, what the spirits gives us that at the time of Kardec, condensation of matter distributed throughout the space. So the big bang, the big explosion, um, all, the, all the elements were uh, created and, uh, and the condensation of matter in the universe started for forming the worlds. Uh, so the spirits are telling us what science still hasn't advanced much further. Of course, a lot more knowledge. But then, of course, we can ask what what happens um, what happens in the creation of the universe. What, what was before, right? And uh, according to the spirits, the theory of the Big Bang of the fourteen billion years is. Um, is what science could reach, but science cannot explain what, what was before, right? So again, we um, are learning and evolving, but we are uh, still following science as Spiritism Kardec tells us. If science 
uh, discover something that goes against what spiritism teaches, stay with science. Um, Orlando asks if uh, evil was evil included in the creation process also. Uh, again, evil is the absence of good and is a creation of us imperfect spirits. God did not create evil. God created spirits simple and ignorant, and through our own progress, we are the ones that, uh, with the absence of, of goodness, end up uh, committing evil. But that's not part of the creation. No, it's our own uh, creation of our own uh, imperfections. Okay. Number 40. Uh, just a second, Danny. So, um... The spirits that are created that you just mentioned, they are placed in, in different uh, planets, not necessarily here all the time. The spirits are, yeah, we're going to, the, the next item is the creation of living beings. But uh, yeah, the spirits uh, populate the whole universe. Um, so so th that, that's my point. So if they are populated in different uh, planets, they evolve in different ways, I would say. Not like us here on Earth, that evil could be part of our own doing necessarily. Well, the, the evolution, spirits are the same uh, all throughout the universe, right? They are created simple and ignorant and go through the evolutionary process. And through the evolutionary press process, they make mistakes and learn from their mistakes and continue evolving. So the process, um, the process is the same. The means in each place can be different, right? You can say that uh, there, there, there may be uh, worlds where there are no wars, where there is more fraternity, possible. We don't know. We know that um, the, the, all the worlds are inhabited, not all of them by incarnated spirits. There are worlds, and we'll study this later, there are worlds that are inhabited by discarnated spirits only. Um, but the evolutionary path, it's a universal thing. It's not different from in, in different worlds. The, the means of it can be different, but not the, the path of evolution. We have to go through the trials and the learning and expiations. This is the, the process everywhere. So the mistakes could be different then. Yes. The kind of the, the type of mistakes that we might do along the way, because if if the the matter is different and the environment is different, because we can't assume that all the planets are like Earth, right? Like the nature and the oceans and whatever. They're not. They're not. So um, Our that action. could trigger different kinds of evolutions then. Yeah, different relations with the, the planet. And uh, with that, different uh, evolutionary paths. But still, the learning and, uh, and evolving from learning and uh, trial and error is the path of evolution of all spirits throughout the universe. Uh, and again, it's, it's a speculation, right? We don't have anything from the spirits. We just have some informations here and there about spirits in different worlds. There are some books that talk about uh, Mars being more evolved. Others say Mars is less evolved. Um, according to the general consensus, Jupiter is the more evolved planet on the solar system. But what type of spirits inhabit a planet that is not of... Uh, of uh, dense matter is a uh, uh, is composed of gas, right? Jupiter and Saturn are, are uh, gas planets. So, what type of spirits lives in a gas planet? It has to have a completely different um, physical formation than us, right? Um, but again, when we talk about the spiritual colonies around Earth, how they are formed? They are formed through the thoughts of the spirits inhabiting them, right? So. Everything is related to that. Um, uh, 
Uh, Orlando is uh, saying here that uh, it's not a process of reincarnation, checking if the spirit has spoiled itself. We we be evil. Well, um, actually, the process of reincarnation is a process, is the natural law, exists for us to progress. We are always progressing. We are always better than our previous incarnations. What we have to do in our incarnations is trials, which is learning from things we don't know, and expiations, which is making corrections from the mistakes we made. When we insist on repeating the mistakes, and there you can place the word evil if you want, uh, is when we create consequences for us, what we can call karma, uh, that we have to face these consequences in future reincarnations or in present incarnations. Again, if you bang your head against the walls, you face the consequences immediately, a headache, right? It's your own free will that made you do the bang your head against the wall and the consequence is a headache. So it's our own choices. And again, the what you call evil is our lack of knowledge and our selfishness uh, working to uh, give us advantages over others, that uh, it's our lack of acting with goodness. Okay. Okay. Number Next. 40. In accordance with current beliefs, are comets the beginning of matter condensation? and thus worlds that are in the process of being formed. Yes, but it is absurd to believe in their influence. More specifically, the influence that is commonly attributed to them because all the heavenly bodies have their own role in certain physical phenomena. So here, when Kardec asks about the comments, we have to remember that uh, we, we knew nothing about comets in the middle of the 19th century. And uh, people believed that comets um, were, had a big influence and, uh, you know, in, the, in plagues and things like that, whatever uh, bad happened to, to uh, places on earth when comets uh, went through. The, you know, there, there were big comets like the Haley Comet that uh, was very visible. So. Uh, people knew about comets for a very long time. The spirits are telling us that they have no influence in the sense that is commonly attributed to them, but they just bring the concept all heavenly bodies have their own role in certain physical phenomena. And we know very well that the moon influences the, uh, the currents, right? And uh, influences also other things, right? The more study our own uh, physical um, energies are influenced by the moon. Uh, but the, you know, the question is how the comets are at the beginning of matter condensation and the spirits yes, say, yes, they are. Again, we know no more about comets today. Of course, we studied them a lot. We are even uh, prepared to deal with comets that may crash on earth because we know that uh, the dinosaurs were extinct by a comet that uh, crashed on earth and destroyed all, almost all living beings, um, believed to be in the Gulf of Mexico nowadays. Uh, the comet uh, reached billions of years ago. But again, it was important because with the dinosaurs here, there could be no uh, human beings <laughs> living on this planet. So everything happens for a reason. And um, the, the evolution of the planet, and we will see that later, uh, also uh, goes through different phases and even the animals that, uh, that uh, live in a planet will evolve and will change. Okay. Number 41. Can a completely formed world disappear and have its matter then be redistributed throughout space? Yes. God renews worlds just as living beings are renewed. And again, nowadays, science 
already tells us that uh, every world is created and has a length of life, the stars also, and then they disappear. Now, nowadays, when we talk about the, the supernovas, right? Uh, the formation of stars and galaxies, um, what science knows today is uh, that over million of year, millions of years, regions of slightly higher density in the early universe began to attract more matter through gravitational attraction. These dense regions, known, known as dark matter halos, served as the seeds for the formation of stars and galaxies. Under the influence of gravity, ga gas and dust within these regions collapse, leading to the formation of first stars and galaxies. And this also, uh, stars have um, a beginning that science was able to, to investigate nowadays. And it's, they expand, stars, they expand until they reach a point where they explode and disappear is when it forms uh, the, all the, the elemental chemi chemical elements are spread throughout the universe and uh, dark matter also is formed. We know that the sun will, our own sun will disappear in some billions of years and together with it, earth will also disappear. So the spirits were just telling us that the worlds are renewed. And as living beings, we know that the worlds also progress, like we study, we, and we are going to study again in the spirits book, the evolution of the worlds. We have in the gospel, the different categories of the world. We were moving from a world of trials and expiations into a world of regeneration. So the world also, the worlds also evolve. Okay. Number 42, can, can we know the length of time required to create worlds? Earth, for, exist, for instance. I cannot answer this question because only the creator knows. The person who claims to possess such knowledge or knowing how many centuries there were required for such a formation would be foolish. Okay. Science nowadays <laughs> have uh have to told us that uh earth was created around uh 4.5 billion years ago uh and life on earth appeared between 3.5 to 4 billion years ago uh probably arising from a simple organic mole molecules in early oceans. So um, the length of time required to create worlds, which is the question by Kardec here, is not when Earth was created, it's the length of time. And that's what the spirits is say that the only God can answer. Um, now we know that proto-Earth, that existed before Earth, uh, divided and created the moon. Our satellite was created by the, the, an explosion and division of Earth as it existed at a certain point before the existence of life on this planet. Okay. Creation of living beings? Yes. When did the population of Earth first begin? In the beginning, there was only chaos. The elements were in a state of confusion, but they gradually settled into their proper places. Once this happened, living beings capable of adapting to the various successive states of the planet appeared accordingly. So, um... According to science today, arising from simple organic molecules in the early oceans and through the process of biological evolution, life diversified and evolved into the myriad forms of plants, animals, and microorganisms that exist today. 
the the spirits are telling us here that what science has proved today to us, that the beginning was chaos and that the elements were gradually settling into place, organizing themselves and starting to create the first forms of life, which are, were bacterias. And, uh, and from there it evolved into the more sophisticated uh, life forms, right? Also plants that are also uh, living, uh, living uh, beings in a sense, not beings, but uh, living things. That's the better word, okay? Number 44. And just a second, Danny. So would be this uh, chaos in the beginning, what the science calls the Big Bang? No, Big no. Bang is the origin of the universe, not of planet Earth. Oh, okay. We're talking about planet Earth. Yeah. Okay. Next. Number, number 44. Where did the living beings of Earth originate? The seeds were contained in the Earth itself awaiting the opportune moment for their development. Organic principles came together once the force that kept them apart was broken. Those principles formed the seeds of all the living beings that populated the earth. Those seeds remain dormant, like the seeds of plants, until the arrival of the right moment for the birth of each species. The members of each species came together and then multiplied. Again, the, the, what the spirit tells us here, um, the seeds were contained in earth itself, <coughs> awaiting the opportunity, opportune moment for the development is what science today has also discovered, that organic principles came together, um, the principles formed the seeds of all the living beings that populated the earth. Um, the what science has today in terms of uh, the origin of life to on earth is still an unresolved scientific question there are some theories there is a theory called abiogenesis known as chemical evolution that uh, suggests that life arose from non-living matter through natural processes. Simple organic mole molecules like amino acids and nucleotides, nucleotides form spontaneously on early Earth under the conditions of the primordial soup. And then they went through chemical reactions, leading to the formation of more complex organisms. Then you have the panspermia, which proposes that life may have originated elsewhere in the universe and being transported to Earth by comets, meteorites, or other celestial bodies. Then there is another one called deep sea hydrothermal vent theory, that um, life may have originated in the deep sea hydrothermal vents, where conditions are thought to mimic earthly art, Earth in the environment, uh, because these places provide rich source of chemical energy and minerals. And the RNA world hypothesis, which is proposes that the ribonucleic acid, RNA, played a central role in the origin of life. RNA molecules, which are capable of both storing genetic information and catalyzing chemical reactions, may have been the first self-replicating molecules on Earth and over time evolved in more complex biological um, systems. Uh, so what they say in conclusion is, while these hypotheses provide plausible explanations, the exact mechanisms by which life arose on Earth remains uncertain. The scientists continue to study this, and we will keep up trying to update. 
Um, Orlando asks, when we talk about bees, are we referring to male and female bees? We are not there yet, Orlando. We're talking about living beings, molecules, bacteria, primitive animals, uh, humans uh, arrived at this planet much, much later. Um, again, the, the, the evolution came through, um, through as, as science knows, through the evolution of the, until we reached the Homo sapiens sapiens, which was according to science, like 50,000 years ago. And uh, before that, of course, we already had the male and female, and, uh, but it, we are talking here at the very beginning before uh, human life existed on earth. Uh, so the spirits, what they tell us here is not much different from what science, science has not gone much further than uh, what the spirits told us 170 years ago, okay? Next. 45. Where were the organic elements before the formation of the earth? They existed in the fluid state, in space with the spirits, or on other planets awaiting the creation of earth to begin a new life in a new world. Chemistry shows us that the molecules of inorganic bodies merging to produce invariable crystals for each species once the conditions are right for their combination. The slightest disturbance of those conditions can block the union of material elements or at least prevent the methodical arrangement of the latter, which constitutes the crystal. Is there a reason why this same process cannot take place among organic elements? We preserve the seeds of plants and animals for years, which are then only born at a certain temperature and under con certain conditions. Wheat seeds have been known to sprout after centuries. This demonstrates that there is a dormant principle of vitality in seeds, which awaits favorable circumstances to develop. Is it not possible then that which takes place right before our eyes every day also has taken place at the birth of our planet? Does this creation of living beings by the forces of nature amidst chaos detract in any way? Oh boy. Does it, if you keep moving, I don't have no idea where I am. I didn't move. Um, detract in any way from the awe inspiring power and glory of God? I have, Last. I got it. Fight quite the opposite in fact the interpretation of certain of creation the interpretation of creation presented by us is more consistent than any other with our sense of god exerting power over all the worlds of infinity through eternal laws this theory does not resolve the origin of vital elements but god has mysteries and has put limits on our investigations. Okay, so um, the question here, where were the organic elements before the formation of, of Earth? And um, the spirits answered that they existed in, the, in space uh, or on other planets awaiting for the creation of Earth to begin a new life. Science today, the organic elements, which include carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and other elements essential for life, were present in various forms throughout the universe before the formation of Earth. These elements are among the most abundant in the cosmos and are formed through processes such as stellar nucleosynthesis, supernova explosion, and cosmic ray spallation. So, what is a stellar nucleosynthesis? Many of the organic elements uh, that were synthesized within the cores of stars through nuclear, nuclear fusion reactions. 
They are created through during the life cycles of stars, during particularly during the main sequence phase and later stages, such as red giant and supernova. During the formation of Earth, the organic elements present, present in the protoplanetary disk were incorporated into the planet's composition. Over time, through processes such as volcanic activity, asteroid and comet impacts and chemical reactions on the Earth's surface, these elements interacted to form more complex organism compounds, eventually giving rise to the earliest forms of life. So, in summary, the organic elements that are essential for life were present throughout the universe before the formation of Earth, originating from stellar processes. These elements played a cr crucial role in the formation of our planet and development of life as we know it. I just uh, thought of bringing the latest uh, scientific knowledge because we can see that, um, you know, the spirits were telling us here, not in such complex words as science uses today, that the elements that created um, everything on Earth existed before Earth. They were just uh, in the universe. Um, and when Earth matter condensated to form the planet Earth, all these organic elements uh, were present in the formation of the planet. They are all part of planet Earth, okay? Um, Kardec then goes into the explanation of it, talking about, uh, you know, uh, the creation and God, but um, he concludes by saying, of course, God has mysteries and has put limits on our investigations, but we continue investigating until we reach a point that we cannot go any further for lack of ability to to, to our instruments or uh, our knowledge but we continue to follow the invested science investigations and uh, we discover more and more but uh, what I think it's 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 relevant is that uh, the spirits brought to us the basic concepts and science has been only expanding on these basic concepts, but that have not deviated from what the spirits brought to us 170 years ago. Okay. Forty-six. Yes. Are any living beings born spontaneously? Yes but the original seeds already existed in a dormant state. You witness this phenomena on a daily basis. For instance, the tissues of the human body and animals contain the germs of many parasites waiting for the fermentation needed for their life. It is a small world of microscopic beings that is dormant waiting to be created. Yes, uh, um, when we talk about the beginning of, uh, of, of uh, living, uh, living beings on the planet, they started uh, by the appropriate conditions of the planet at that time. As they become more complex, then they need reproduction uh, instruments to develop. But they were, the original seeds were on earth in a dormant state, waiting for the proper conditions for them to start uh, existing as a living um, entity. Uh, and uh, the spirit says, it's a small world of microscopic beings that is dormant, waiting to be created, waiting to come into existence according to the conditions of earth. Now, this doesn't mean that the more complex beings are created spontaneously. They are not. They are the result of the evolution of the most uh, primitive rudimentary uh, beings, okay? Forty-seven? Yes. Was the human species among the organic elements contained in the earth? Yes, and it arrived at the opportune moment. 
The saying that human beings were formed out of the dust of the earth is very much true. Uh, again, we, if we examine, scientifically examine our physical bodies, all the organic elements present in our physical body belongs, they already exist on earth and they belong to earth. There is nothing in our physical body that is uh, extraterrestrial. Everything is elements that exist on earth. So they were formed out of the dust of the earth, uh, like they say here, right? Forty-eight. And Danny. Is this uh, for a reference the dust from the formed by out of the dust of the earth referenced in the Bible or no? I'm not sure. Um, I don't. I'm. I'm not sure if it is um, out of the Bible or it's just a saying that uh, humans have. But it's probably somewhere. In the in the religious texts, right? I imagine, but I I don't know. Philip, forty-eight. Can can we determine the time of the appearance of humans and other living beings on Earth? No, all your calculations are illusions. Yeah, I I think the spirit should have said not yet here because um, we are getting there, you know, we are determined. And, but again, when we say that the first living beings are between 3.5 and 4 billion years, we're talking about 500 million years, right? Which is a lot of time, right? So the exact time, we don't. Uh, estimate, we can speculate. Uh, spirit says that all our calculations are illusions. Time will tell. We, we, we are not going to contradict the spirits here, but we are going to wait for, for the future to tell us. Okay. 49. Danny. I Googled quickly and it, it, I think so. The... The, the the quotation that they brought, this says the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into, the, into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden and there he put the man he had formed. So it, it is from Genesis, the old the Genesis, yeah. Yes. So there you go. Thanks, then. Okay, Philip. 49. If the seeds of the human species were among the organic elements of the earth, why is it that human beings? are not produced spontaneously today as they originally were. The principle of things is one of God's secrets. Nevertheless, it may be asserted that the first humans absorbed the elements necessary for their creation to transfer said elements according to the laws of reproduction. The same may be said in regard to all the different species of living beings. It's interesting here because Kardec asks if the why human beings are not produced spontaneously today as they originally were. And the spirits don't answer that they originally were. They, the spirit says that the, the, the elements necessary for the creation uh, according to the laws of reproduction. So again, they spontaneously created were the the primitive uh, beings, uh, the elementary beings, as they combine itself, they were the ones created spontaneously. And from them, it was through reproduction, even uh, some were self-reproducting, but uh, it was through reproduction and human beings were a product of the evolutionary uh, path of um, 
of living beings on this planet. So the, the spirits do not uh, confirm what Kardec asks. They say that we were uh, created according to the laws of reproduction. And the same may be said to regard to all different spe species of living beings coming from primitive uh, elementary origins and then becoming more complex and using the law of reproduction, which is a law that um, one of the moral laws that we study later in this book, that are the, the results of this evolutionary path. Okay? A lot of science today, a lot of uh, uh, studies of the origins of the universe. And, uh, but I think it's important for us to, uh, to co connect what the spirits brings to us at that time of Kardec and what science has uh, achieved today, learned today. And so that's why I brought all this scientific knowledge that I thought it was important for us to, uh, to uh, compare to what uh, the spirits brought at the time of Kardec. So we see that there are not many differences, actually. There is an evolution of what the spirits brought to us. Okay, we're going to stop here. Any final questions, comments? Okay, um, so for this weekend, we have on, um, on Saturday, we have a lecture by oh no, this this is what was last week. Um, let me see the lecture this weekend. Just a sec. I have it here somewhere. John, it may be uh, Jesus in our daily lives. I'm yeah. not sure by Alex, I believe, Alex Alvarez. Jesus in our daily lives. Yes, thanks, Carol. Uh, by Alex, uh, Alex Alves. He will talk about the importance of adopting the values of Christ in contrast to the values of the world. In this conversation, he will address the need to choose the correct and enduring values that can lead us to the world of regeneration. Okay. Psychology and spirituality tomorrow, 6 p.m. Um, SGNY will be closed on Monday, which is President's Day. Okay, we won't be here. And on Sunday, it's the third Sunday of the month, we are studying the mediums book. We are studying the chapter theories. <coughs> book club, chapter two of book two, Ill Fated Diamonds by Victor Hugo and through the psychography of Divaldo Frank. Okay? Carol, can you do a final prayer? Yes, thank you so much, John. That's very thought-provoking class. Thank you, appreciate it. And Philip, thank you for reading and thank you everyone for participating. Infinite creator and divine providence, we give thanks again to be together for our studies of the Spirit's book chapter two, the end of chapter two, and the beginning of chapter three. Universal space is unlimited and infinite. Reason tells us that the universe did not create itself, nor did it occur by chance. God exists and creation manifests through God's will. God acts through the spirits, and matter is distributed throughout space. The Big Bang occurred in which matter was rearranged through condensation, generally speaking. Stars expand and eventually explodes and dark matter forms. Planets are created in God's timely arrangements. Elements gradually come together simplistically and evolve through each phase of development of the organic principles. Science fortunately continues to update this information through investigation that we may know more and be more enlivened as to the, the creation. 
Organic elements are part of the planet Earth and living beings on Earth evolve through stages. We give thanks to the spiritual benefactors and the good spirits for guiding and inspiring us this evening. May we receive the love, light, and peace of Christ within us and for our loved ones, our teachers, our directors, the counselors, the mediums, the workers, and all who are connected and participating with SGNY. We pray for inner peace and especially now for world peace and for those who are suffering in the physical and spiritual worlds. We pray for SGNY and all spiritist centers throughout the world that they may grow, expand, and be protected each day and each night. As we close, we humbly ask for safety and protection as we return to family, friends, and loved ones. May we go forth and remind ourselves to be beacons of light, and may we receive the love, light, and peace of Christ within us to help us to be of greater service and charity. So be it.